2011, I think you said something about, quote, Texas is lingering and historic drought could easily stay around for years and there's a chance it might last another five or even until 2020. I wanted to see if you can expand on that a little bit. Yes, that's, uh, that's referring to uh, what I alluded to in the, um, in the next to last paragraph of, of my testimony. The, uh, there are two multi-decade scale uh, natural cycles, one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic. And uh, both have been tied um, to um, variations of rainfall within the south central United States. The, uh, they're called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation and the Atlantic Multi-Decadal Oscillation. Um, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation switched over toward favoring dry conditions about the year 1998 or 2000. The Atlantic Multi-Decadal Oscillation back in 1995, and they're both favoring dry conditions for the state, so that's why we're especially susceptible to drought now. Uh, technology does not allow us to make forecasts of those oscillations because we have a fairly short period of record and limited observations through the depth of the ocean. But based on past history, uh, they tend to be stay in the same phase for about uh, 25 to 30 years. So based on that time scale, we should be somewhere around halfway through this particular dry period. You've also said, too, that you've been quoted as saying that global warming is a serious problem. And so is, could you comment on whether there's some correlative value to these two statements? Sure. Um, at, at present, um, the, the, the climate records within the state indicate uh, um, a, a overall increase of total rainfall, which uh, may or may not be climate change related. Um, the triggering factor of El Nino and La Nina, um, we do not know how that will change because of climate change. Um, the only factor related to the drought that can be clearly related to climate change is the change in temperature and the state uh, temperature has, has increased on average by about two degrees Fahrenheit since the, um, since the 1970s. And uh, so that impacts drought through evaporation and essentially loss of water once it reaches the ground. So, so um, based on that, at least uh, that aspect of drought is being uh, uh, made worse by climate change. Now, when we talk about the climate, you know, the Escalating temperatures. Are we talking about just you know nationally, globally, uh, in the region? The, uh, the the local increase of temperature over the past uh, um, 40 years or so is is fairly consistent with what has been happening uh, regionally and globally. Um, over the past century, um, the change in temperature in Texas and the rest of the Southeast actually lags behind uh, the change in temperature over most of the rest of the globe. And uh, that's thought to be, um, at least based on computer models, due to uh, natural variability working toward lowering temperatures at the same time that uh, uh, changes in atmospheric composition have been leading toward higher temperatures. So um, based on that, um, the expectation is that temperatures in Texas should continue to keep pace with or possibly exceed the rate of warming globally. So the escalating temperature, I mean, would, would you say that that is a factor that contributes to uh, our drought conditions? It contributes uh, to drought um, both uh, locally on the ground, it contributes to water supply if you're talking about surface water supply, and it also contributes to wildfire danger through more rapid drying out of uh, foliage. And that would be the erosion of surface water due to global conditions, I mean, or, or temperature conditions? The evaporation due to higher temperature, yes. Thank you.